Good morning. Welcome to our Easter service at One Church in Kingsport this morning. We're so glad you could join us online in your living room, at work, wherever you may be watching it today. Um, whether it be on your TV or tablet or phone, we're so glad we could get together and worship this Easter morning. Um, it's unusual for us not to get together and worship, especially for Easter but I want us to be reminded that this is probably the most similar to the way the first Easter was spent. Um, the disciples were hiding in their homes, afraid to come out, fear, fearful for their lives, not knowing what had just happened, not fully understanding so they were hiding and here we are we're not hiding but we're in our homes and we're not fearful of not knowing that Jesus rose from the grave because we already know he did we know he rose we know he conquered the grave we know he defeated death and so we get to celebrate that today from our homes. A few announcements I want to share with you this morning before we get started. Again, if you need anything, supplies, groceries, pharmacy, post office, let us know. We'll run errands for you. That's what we'll do. Just send me a text. Send Jay a text. We'll go get you some, whatever you ask for. Um, and we'll, we'll take care of that. We'll get it to you. Also, keep, uh, keep tithing during this time. You can go to OneChurchKingsport.com. Again, OneChurchKingsport.com. And you can click on the Give button there and send your tithes that way. Or you can send it to our P.O. Box, P.O. Box 3791, Kingsport, Tennessee, 37664. Again, P.O. Box 3791, Kingsport, Tennessee, 37664. You guys have been faithful in your giving, and I want to commend you and thank you for that. Um, and so those are our couple announcements we got going on. We're wrapping up our series today, in Micah 6 8, on the things that God desires. Um, Jay's going to lead us in a time of worship before I preach, and also a time of celebration. Um, of, of the resurrection after I'm done and so we're so thankful for Jay and his ministry um, to us as he leads us in song um, but before we do all that I want to read some scripture today to start our, our time of worship together I want to read to you from Matthew chapter 28 starting in verse 1 through verse 10 After the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to view the tomb. There was a violent earthquake because an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and approached the tomb. He rolled back the stone and was sitting on it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards were so shaken by fear of him that they became like dead men. The angel told the women, Don't be afraid, because I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. For he has risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples, He has risen from the dead, and indeed he's going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Listen, I have told you. So departing quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, they ran to tell the disciples the news. And just then, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. They came up, took a hold of his feet, and worshipped him. And Jesus told them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Let's pray. Father God, help us to worship you. We are so grateful, so thankful that you did not stay down, that you got back up, defeated death, conquered the grave, 
had the victory over sin. Help us to see that today and to worship you. Worship you as we come together in our homes, but we're together as a family, lifting up the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. In your name I pray. Amen. Hey, good morning and happy Easter to everybody out there and wherever you are, Facebook, Instagram, wherever, Kentucky, Virginia, Tennessee, wherever you are. And thank you for worshiping with us this morning on this Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Again, my name is Jay. If this is your first time, I would like to welcome you guys. And we're kind of making things up as we go along here with this craziness that's going on. I'm just grateful we have technology and just the ability to still worship together as a family. And this morning, we're just going to sing some songs. Brian's going to deliver a message. But our main purpose here today is just to give him the praise and the glory and the honor that he deserves. Because today is the day that he defeated death. He rose from the grave and he gave us life. So let's give him that glory that he deserves and just raise and praise his name. Make a joyful noise as a family.
did so much for us. Not just this week, for each and every day of our lives. But today, or this week, is kind of the pinnacle. He endured this week. He defeated death. And that's what this next song is about. It's at the cross. The ultimate act of love. Voluntary love. a place where mercy reigns and never dies. There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide. Where all the love I've ever found comes like a sinner and the 
early church, when they met, Father, they met in homes with family and friends. Well, we're with family. And through the resources that we have, we can be with friends. Thank you for allowing us to come in and worship you on this Resurrection Sunday. Thank you so much. continuing our series, Micah 6, 8, um, What God Desires. If you haven't guessed it by now, we ask the question, what does God mean by the phrase? Um, we, we, first week we looked at with our God. What's it mean to walk with our God? And then the second week we looked at act justly and what that phrase meant. And last week we looked at love mercy. So this week we're looking at the phrase walk humbly. The words of the prophet Micah up to this point have, have helped us to understand that sacrificial worship is, is pointless unless it's supported with obedience. God requires we act justly, love mercy, walk humbly. To act justly means simply to do what's right. And, and to love mercy means that if we love God, we're to display loving kindness and mercy and faithfulness toward others. And so, before we continue, I want us to read that verse, Micah, chapter 6, verse 8. He's told you, O oh man, what is good? What does the Lord require of you? But to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God. The purpose of the phrase, walk humbly, is different from the previous two phrases. You will recall uh, that justice and loving kindness, justice and mercy are character traits of God. They indicate how we should treat others. One could argue that probably humility is a character trait of God. One that we probably should emulate. But I don't think that's what's being communicated here through Micah. He's telling us through this phrase that God is concerned with us having a right and proper relationship with him. Because he adds, walk humbly with your God. Be in a right relationship with God. And you're not going to fail. All throughout Israel's history, we, we find a pattern or a cycle of rebellion. God promises to bless his people if they remain faithful to him. And this is the basis of the covenant he's formed with the people of Israel. God presented the people of God laws which they demonstrated their faithfulness to him. And they're to obey those laws. And they, they blame God for their own mistakes. The people did not walk humbly with God. They walked proudly in disobedience. So, so when they came to the temple to offer their acts of worship, God said, I don't want it. He rejected their, their fake worship. Two things I want us to stick out today about walk humbly. The first one, to walk humbly means to, for us to realize our goodness comes from God. To walk humbly, it means we have to realize our goodness comes from God. Micah called for the people to remember that any good found in them was due to the Lord's enabling. God required from those who, who claim the Lord as their God proof of a godly lifestyle. What, what does God then require? Faith. He requires faith. To walk humbly was, and is to this day, is simply to live by faith. A faith sought to give God first place. 
instead of seizing it for yourself. Jesus himself uses Micah 6.8 to give the same message in the Gospel of Matthew. Here's what he says in Matthew chapter 23, verse 23. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin, but you neglected the more important matters of the law. Justice. Mercy. And faithfulness. You should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former. We find the three familiar requisites for pleasing God. Requirements for pleasing God. Justice, mercy, faithfulness. The question asked by Mike is not intended that we believe that worship practices are corrupt and they're not merited. We are to worship God. We cannot save ourselves through kind acts and fairness. Mike is not attacking the worship practice established in the tabernacle and the temple. What he is doing, however, is a call for men and women to demonstrate the reality of their faith by living it out. In everyday life. Romans chapter 3, 20 through 22. Romans chapter 3, verses 20 through 22 says this Therefore, no one will be declared righteous in God's sight by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we became conscious of our own sin. But now, apart from the law, the righteousness of God has been made known to which the law and the prophets testify. This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. To walk humbly. First, we have to recognize our goodness comes from God. The second thing, to walk humbly. It requires us to be willing to walk humbly. It requires us to, to be willing. The key phrase in this is walk. The Hebrew word halak. H-A-L-A-K. Halak. Gives the impression of a fluid motion. Kind of like a river. We're to walk with God, being careful to put God first. And to, to live with him in his will. Our life journey is likened to a walk with God as our constant companion. Kind of like a river that flows constantly. When we walk humbly with God, our life's going to demonstrate the characteristics that are evident in God himself. The evidence of our walk will be witnessed in our acts of kindness, our acts of mercy, our acts of compassion and justice and the like. The flip side then becomes that as soon as we feel like we're the ones responsible for these qualities, we're not walking humbly with God. I think sadly today, we're surrounded by a me mentality. It's all about me. What can I do to improve life for myself? And what can you do to improve life for me? It's my life, my money, my possessions, my relationships, my focus, my decision, my church, my needs to be met. It needs to be about me. It's all about me. But when we walk humbly with our God, it's his money, his possessions. His relationship, His focus, His decision, His church, His will be met. Not my will, Father, but yours will be done. It's all about God. As I got to thinking this week about Passion Week, what that symbolizes, Jesus riding in Sunday, last Sunday, Palm Sunday, Riding into town in Jerusalem on the back of a colt, on the back of a donkey. Almost as is, here's the king coming to town. 
people lining the streets and putting palm branches down in front of him as he came to town, cheering everyone coming out to see him come to Jerusalem for Passover. highly celebrated that on Friday that humble walk that walk where he, after he'd already been beaten that he had to carry his own cross people are now lining the street not laying down palm branches, but booing him and mocking him. He goes from being celebrated to being crucified. I can't think of a more humbling, more humbling. I think it's something for us to emulate. It's something for us to live by. Humility. It's not thinking less of yourself. It's not always talking about your faults and your shortcomings. It's simply recognizing the truth about ourselves. And then most often, forgetfulness of self allows concerns for others and in genuine worship. To walk humbly with God requires us to realize that everything good in us comes from Him. And then it requires us to be willing. The fundamental basis of walking humbly with God is recognizing we cannot live without Him. And with the promise of God's Spirit, we don't have to do it. Father God, thank you so much. Thank you so much for your word and what it teaches us today. Help us to walk humbly. We, we've looked at Micah 6, 8 and found out what you required of us to, to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly. Help us to realize that it's not about putting ourselves down, but it's about lifting you up. Help us to lift you up in our everyday walk as we go throughout. Be with us during this time of worship. Thank you so much that you conquered the grave, God. You have, you have risen, and we're excited to celebrate it this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Brian. Well, One Church family, we're going to conclude and close out our Easter service this morning by singing two more songs giving him the praise and the honor that he deserves this morning. So I invite you to sing with us and just praise the name of Jesus.
what we've done. Blood that was shed this past Friday. That red blood makes us white as snow. So if we're hurting, if we're lost, if we're confused, just ask the Lord that you will just guide us. Remind us of your presence. Help us show that great love to whomever we come in contact with. six feet away from them, or when all this stuff is over, we're right up next to them. May we show your love, because you showed it to us, and we didn't deserve it. We love you. We praise you. 